All right, everybody, here's today's video. Last year, I did a classroom tour video. The question I get the most is, where did I get my flying books from? And where did I get my floating bookshelves from? And my response to that is always, I made them. Any high school teacher knows that when you go to places like Lakeshore Learning or a number of other educational stores or websites, they have, almost have nothing for high school teachers or middle school teachers. It's very, very limited. I decided that I was just gonna make my own stuff if it didn't exist. Here's what I'm gonna show you today, how easy it is to make both a very cool flying book or a floating bookshelf. I don't know why everything has to be flying or floating. It's kind of a theme in my life. I should probably investigate. I'm gonna jump into this in just a second, but first I wanna say this. If you think that you're not creative, if you think that you can't do this, if you think that you are not sure, you know, what did he mean when he said that? What, what is that? What is a hot glue gun? Like, where do I buy one of those? Does it matter what kind I get? Do me a favor, please either email me, DM me, leave a comment in the section below, and I promise I'll try and get back to you and answer any question that you have because you can do this. I'm gonna show you a way to make both of these things that anyone, even with very, very limited resources, can make these things. Let's jump into this now. For this project, you'll need a sacrificial book, a knife, some fishing line, a hot glue gun, and one of these eye hook John things. All right, let's get to the surgery. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove that dust jacket. Things completely unnecessary from now on. So they get a little stuck on the older books. Might need a giant knife to remove it. Be safe, kids. Use adult supervision. And adults use other adult supervision. Next thing you want to do is just carefully cut out some of these pages and make sure that you keep the edges nice and clean. You might want to use a sharper knife than I chose to use here. This thing was slightly sharper than a spoon. can set those pages aside and you're going to use those and again in just a second. Then you're going to take out your glue gun, like this hard worn piece of hardware here, and you're going to start bending your pages back in groups of six or seven pages. And then make sure that you're applying enough glue that it's really going to hold those pages on there. So you're still just using the pages that are still attached to the book. You're gonna make three to four loops at the top of your book that are gonna support all the other pages that will be hanging from these in just a moment. All right, at this point, you're gonna take the pages that you'd already cut out. You're gonna put a little glue in those creases. About three dots of glue should do it. And then just insert those pages right in there and they dry really quickly and this goes very, very quickly. The larger this gets, you might need an extra set of hands. Once you get to the top, it starts to tip over and it can be hard to glue it and to put the paper in and hold the whole thing up at the same time. And then you end up burning yourself. Not saying I did that, just saying I might know a guy that did that on accident. Then you're gonna set that masterpiece on its side and you're pretty much done. The last thing you have to do is insert that eye hook into the top of the book. This is how you're gonna suspend it from the ceiling or wherever you're suspending it from. When you're screwing that in, make sure you get it into the binding really good. Otherwise it will just pull out through the paper. So you wanna make sure you get it into the binding. Take some fishing string, get a giant knife, cut a piece off. Again, be careful and then tie it onto the top and then you can hang that from wherever you wanna hang it from. Four inch by 24 inch piece of plywood or MDF. You'll need a drill, a drill bit, a hammer, some nails, some brackets, and some wall anchors. What type of wood you use is completely up to you. I use MDF because it is cheap and let's be honest, teachers, we dream on a budget. I like my eyes and my ears. The books that are going on this shelf are six inches deep, so I'm going to make my shelf six and a half inches deep just to give a little bit of extra room so no books are hanging off the front. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a table saw, you can cut these at home. I'm making three cuts at six and a half inches. If you don't have your own saw, all big box stores will cut these pieces for you. Next, you're gonna to measure to see how tall your shelves need to be. 
Place your book even with the top of the board and then make it a little bit longer than it needs to be. This just ensures that the book will be removed from the shelf easily. If you've not read this book by Rafe Esquith, it is the truth. To cut these pieces, you could use a handsaw, a circular saw, a table saw. I do not, however, recommend using a chainsaw. The next thing I recommend is pre-drilling your holes for these brackets. This will be harder to do later after you put your shelf together. Then you're gonna mark for your nail holes Use three nails on each side to hold your shelf together. If you're going to hand nail these together, it's a good idea to pre-drill MDF beforehand so that it doesn't split when you're nailing it. Then go ahead and put your glue on and prepare to fasten it together. When nailing it together, a small hammer should work and these nails work perfectly. If you have a nail gun handy, go ahead and use that thing as well. Connect the other side by gluing it and then put your top right on and you can nail that in as well. When attaching the brackets that you're gonna to use to hang this against the wall, you can just screw those in. You already had the holes from earlier. You can do this with a screw gun or with a screwdriver. I haven't done much in the way of like how to two videos. Actually, my first YouTube video of all time was how to make a concrete pot, this little sucker right here. And it wasn't part of like my channel or anything like that. I just put it on YouTube just to do it. And that got like thousands and thousands of views, which was kind of hilarious. Here's what I want you to walk away with from this situation. If you're trying to make something like this, if you make a bookshelf, all you're really doing is sticking four pieces of wood together so that it holds a book. You can do this a lot of different types of ways. So if you don't have a hammer or you don't have a drill or something like that, I mean, you could, you could literally just take a bunch of these brackets put them on the inside like that and just hold the wood together like that. It's really, it really doesn't matter how you decide to do it. What matters is that you have the courage to attempt to do it. The only kind of postscript that I think is important to walk away with is that mistakes happen. I actually screwed up when I was making this and you didn't see it on camera, but I'm gonna show it to you now. The screws that came with the brackets I was talking about, with these brackets, the screws that came with these were a little bit too long and they popped through the top of this. So you make sure that you get, the screws aren't longer than the wood is wide. Be mindful of that because what you don't wanna have happen is someone to get hurt, right? So as long as this holds books, you have succeeded. If you stab a kid in the process, you lost because then books equal blood and no one wants to read blood. It really made no sense at all, but I'm, I'm gonna leave it in there. Like I said in the beginning of this video, please, 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 if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I would love to answer them. So if you aren't sure what a hot glue gun is or what kind of hot glue gun to use or where did I get those brackets or what size screw was that or, you know, I only have this kind of hammer. I, no questions are dumb questions. Reach out, I'll answer the questions for you. It's no big deal and I'll help you out. You got some cool flying books and, and shelves. I actually, one of my daughter's friends was over. She saw me making this the other day and I just told her I would give it to her. So I'm gonna actually go deliver this one now. Riley, this one's for you. Gang, you're the best as always. Thanks so much for supporting all of this crazy stuff that we're doing and for just being so kind. And I apologize about the airplanes, even in the shed, got airplanes. Thanks guys, peace.